I'm honestly speechless with how much info we were given in the latest episode of the Brawl Stars podcast. Your boy Ray is here to give you everything you need to know. Let's get into it. So if you all aren't aware at this point, there was an announcement a few weeks ago stating that the Brawl Stars dev team would be creating a podcast that would be answering some of the most burning questions from individuals inside the community about future updates and just other questions. So today I'm going to be trying to do my best to condense some of the most interesting bits of content that came out of this podcast, seeing that it is two hours long. But I highly recommend you guys go check it out for yourselves because it is a genuinely really interesting watch. And of course, if you guys enjoy this, find this useful it always goes a long way in supporting the channel and let me know that you guys enjoy the content with a subscribe so I'm going to try to do my best to start off with some of the more pressing info, i.e. info that will translate to this next update here. One of which is probably the most compelling and exciting. In the podcast, they confirmed that one of the Brawler families will be complete here with this next update, Season 18. Taking a look at the existing Brawler trios that we have here in the game and the ones that are yet to be complete, if they are completing a trio, it leaves two different possibilities. Number one, there could be two Brawler released in the update potentially two of them fitting into the same exact trio maybe rounding off a one member trio right now but i think that's a bit of a stretch what i think is the most likely outcome is one of the brawlers being released in this update i got a feeling there's going to be two is going to fill out one of the existing two family trios that we have right now what that is going to be i'm not 100 certain but if i were to try to theorycraft just a little bit if say for example the theories that we've brought up in recent videos here on the channel with a future update theme around the corner that might have something to do with a deserted island to a sense where pirates might be involved. I could see a brawler fitting into that type of vein, maybe fitting into the gold arm gang trio. Seeing that they're outlaws constantly doing crime and stealing things, I think maybe a pirate character could fit into that trio very nicely. But other than that, it's kind of left up in the air. Now, if a second brawler is added in this update, I could really, really see a second brawler added to either the Buzz Trio or the Underwater Trio if the theme that we have been theory crafting here recently is going to come to flourishing, right? Some sort of underwater trio with elements of a deserted island I think would make a lot of sense. And some sort of tropical deserted island where there's active volcanoes, maybe some prehistoric vibes, maybe another dinosaur brawler fitting in there and seeing that Buzz's Trio has been vacant for such a long time, I think it would make a lot of sense. Another really, really interesting question answered towards the later half of the podcast that I don't think would translate to this next update or anything like that, but I found it super compelling. And that has everything to do with third star powers and gadgets. They eventually answered the question stating that it is something they have considered and something that very well could come to the game in the very near future. We all already know that star powers and gadgets govern a lot of the actual play style that this game Game has to offer especially towards the later half of progression in the game it's the end cap of advanced tactics and gameplay it's basically what you look forward to in brawl stars when you are newer to the game right it's that end game progression and that end game advanced gameplay so seeing that they considered it we very well could be seeing sometime down the line a world where we have three gadgets and three star powers on every single brawler in this game however they clarify that it's super important important to them at the minute and an actual answer to a question given earlier on in the podcast that they want to kind of button up some of the loose ends with gadgets and star powers that seem somewhat useless. They use, for example, one of the newer gadgets released into this game, a gadget for RT, being pretty dang useless if you ask me, where if you're separated from the legs that RT has and you activate the gadgets, it sends a signal back to the legs, slowing down individuals that are caught within that path and taking very minimal damage. They are aware of other abilities in the game that are also somewhat useless or feel a little bit underwhelming and they want to straight up rework those gadgets and star powers which are always really exciting events whenever updates come around the corner where buffs and nerfs to star powers and gadgets can definitely revamp some of their standings in the game itself but sometimes and what they stated in the podcast these abilities are just not to that standard 
where even if you were to buff the crap out of an ability, it would still be somewhat useless, thus needing a full on rework. So I'm sure that's going to be a priority before they add third star powers or third gadgets, but it's nice to know that that could be a thing in the near future for Brawl Stars. But moving on to the next question that was answered in the podcast that I found super compelling, and that has everything to do with what they might change when it comes to the trophy road here that we have existing in the game right now. We've brought up this somewhat issue in past episodes here on the channel, being that when you reach the end of the trophy road at 50,000 trophies, it's not that memorable. There's no real rewards past 10,000 trophies on the trophy road that is substantial enough to make you go, holy crap crap where it can feel a little bit bad once you reach a significant milestone like 40,000 trophies and 50,000 trophies, which is not that crazy far out of reach now that we have so many brawlers in the game, which is pretty much so inevitable when you release a reward system for the trophy road way, way back in the day, back in the day when 50,000 trophies was pretty much so out of reach at the time. But they stated in the podcast that they're not happy with the state of the trophy road, literally giving an example of people getting to 40,000 trophies and not really rewarded for that insane accomplishment. So it seems like it could be something along the horizon that gets revamped to maybe like 100,000 as the question stated and them answered. But as for the next question that I found really important to add here in this episode, and that has stuff to do with lore. When will Star Park return to the game? They answered almost as if they were surprised, basically saying that Star Park has never ended. It has always been a continuation, even if it has kind of eased up in comparison to its heyday when we were getting the investor video and stuff like that. It's still something that the dev team is constantly trying to put in, in fun little elements and always trying to continue here. It is a top priority of theirs and they hold the lore of Brawl Stars and Star Park to a very high standard, meaning that they want to make sure it is a great narrative and a great storyline before we get like a second season of Star Park and get these crazy things happening much like it did some time ago. Moving along to another really compelling question about fame as well as masteries. Two newer additions to the game for more late end progress and just flex worthy things for OG players. It's pretty safe to say that fame got a bad rap as soon as it was released, right? I think it kind of eased up a little bit with this newest update where we can literally flex our fame rank. But adding to the hype of the fame in the future, they had also added in the podcast that they are very much so considering adding additional rewards along the fame track that we have here, that it's not just a flex worthy thing, but also things that we could potentially receive much like profile icons or other flex worthy things, showcasing that you made it to a significant rank on the fame road that we have right now. I think it'd be really, really cool to get just profile icons of the fame rank that you made it to. Can you imagine making it to the final one, the solar rank and having a profile icon like that? I think that'd be sick. But another really awesome awesome thing that they stated along this same narrative is about masteries and they toying around with the idea of adding game mode masteries sometime in the future. I feel like masteries has been one of the cooler additions to the game in quite some time and I would love additions to that idea here in future updates and I think a game mode mastery would be amazing. I think it would really warrant other people to kind of stretch outside of their comfortability here in Brawl Stars, maybe some just straight up solo players playing showdown it might make sense for them to branch out and play more 3v3 game modes and maybe find a new love inside of brawl stars if they are just a little bit more scared and staying in their bubble we'll have to wait and see on that note i find it really really interesting some of the things that they can do with fame and masteries is cool one question that I wanted to share with you all in this episode today that I found super, super interesting is, will the director of Star Park ever be a brawler added to the game? And there was a very harsh no to that question. I shouldn't say harsh, it was just something that they were pretty much so unanimous about. It wasn't going to be a brawler added to the game. But I like this question and answer, basically confirming that the director of Star Park isn't in the game already, and that the director of Star Park is 
is an entity in the game that is yet to be discovered, maybe a narrative that could be toyed with in a future coming of Star Park, maybe a Star Park season two, we would gain some hindsight as to what the director might be like, which there are already some really interesting theories that might come up in a future video here on the channel. But slowly approaching the later half of this episode here today, another question that I found pretty dang interesting, a point that we brought up recently here on the channel, and that is, will the Brawl Stars dev team bring back skins that are somewhat old here in the game? Say, for example, pre-season 11. Along the same narrative of a tweet that we saw recently here coming from the Brawl Stars dev team, they don't have any plans to bring back old exclusive skins, but if they were considering it, they would bring back that specific skin, but but with a color variation, which is super, super cool. I love that idea, basically showing that, yeah, if you really, really like the skin, you would get a skin variation, but the original skin would be held to those people who have the exclusivity narrative behind it, which I really, really enjoy. There was also a question whether or not 5v5 would ever come to Brawl Stars, which has been a topic brought up for several, several years now. And we actually got a little bit of info as to why it hasn't been implemented up until this point. And Frank states that the reason being is the whole UI designed around Brawl Stars is it's not really compatible for 5v5 gameplay. So it seems like it has been an idea that they've been toying around with, but Brawl Stars would have to undergo a few different specific changes on the back end in order to make it even feasible for the future of Brawl Stars. Another question they answered about Showdown Plus. Some of the community's absolute favorite game mode. It was a joyous time, basically just Showdown, but the chance to get more trophies than usual. They explained that the game mode Showdown Plus itself will not come back to the game, but maybe some other variations of Showdown. The whole purpose of Showdown Plus was to try to minimize teaming inside the game and seeing that it did not accomplish that, there's no real reason to bring it back in the first place. And the final question, though there are several more here in this podcast, seeing that it was two hours long, is in regards to toxicity and specifically the thumbs down pin. The question was, when will you delete the thumbs down pin? They don't want people feeling bad about specific things here in the game, but they also don't want to take away people's ability to communicate or taking away people's ways to express themselves here in the game, because it's all about a perspective thing when it comes to the red thumbs down pin. There are some people who think it is the most toxic thing in the entire world and that's how they take it whenever someone throws out a red thumbs down pin but then there's other people who think that is just friendly banter at the end of the day so frank explains it's basically on you to internalize what that red thumbs down pin means and if they were to ever take away something like that it would take away people's expression and the way that they express themselves inside of brawl stars so that's necessarily something that they don't want to mess around with but if it were to be for example the red thumbs down down pin a universally recognized way to say you are the worst character or the worst player in the entire game the most toxic thing ever then they would probably consider taking it out of the game but yeah i think that's a good stopping point for this episode here today like i said before these podcasts are pretty dang long with a ton of different questions being answered in them and seeing that this is just the first episode it's really exciting knowing that there will be more here to come and if you enjoyed this somewhat synopsis or breakdown so you guys can digest it a little bit easier make sure to let me know i would love to do this here again in the future but yeah thanks for watching have a great rest of your day and we will see you in the next one adios and take care